Hello to all of our friends out in Parent Tween Connection world. We're coming to you live through our Facebook group at theparentweenconnection.com. And we're live on our LinkedIn page and to our YouTube channel. So you can't miss us at this point. And trust me, this is a conversation you don't want to miss. If you're not watching Dr. Roz, you have to be because this woman has the most amazing facial expressions <laughs> and a personality to match. Oh, Before we get there, if we haven't had a chance to meet, I'm Clarissa Constantine. I'm the founder of the Parent Tween Connection. And our mission is to create community for parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, and the other community members who support teens and tweens. And some of those community members include professionals like Dr. Roz, because you know what? Moral support from other parents is great. Yes. And sometimes we need some cold hard facts about things. So Dr. Roz, thank you for being with us today. Absolutely. I am delighted to be here. I so appreciate you inviting me into this amazing community. Thank you. Well, you have such a topic that is so important for any family that sees college as an option for their kids after, after high school. If you didn't catch the title, folks, it's debt-free degree with Dr. Roz. Dr. Mm -hmm. Roz, besides just being a huge personality, mm -hmm. um, had a 30-year career in higher education. Mm -hmm. She had her bachelor's, her master's, and her PhD, and she paid a whopping $1,000 yes. for all three. So we're going to learn more about that in our exclusive conversation later uh, for Parent Tween Village. But Dr. Roz, you took all that and you brought it out to folks in a very approachable fashion, I might say. Thank you. So like, give us the, the quick, short version. Did I miss any salient points on the degrees and how much you paid? No, that's, that is actually my tagline. I have three degrees, including my PhD, and I only took $1,000 in loans, and I can teach you how to do it as well. Awesome. So I know that by... <laughs> I'm not the only one who wishes that I would have had you 20 some odd years ago. Oh, no, sure there's yes. plenty of other parents who feel that way. Yeah. yeah. But you use what you call the grit blueprint. Yes. Tell me more. Tell me more. Yes. So in all of my coaching programs and in all of my speaking, I always use the acronym GRIT. Um, I am from the South. And so, you know, it's a little bit of a play on words there. But for debt-free degree, the G is grants and scholarships. There's 30 billion with a B, 30 billion dollars in grants and scholarships out there. The R is return on investment. Super important to begin with the end in mind, as Stephen Covey said, and mm -hmm. looking at how much you're going to pay for that degree versus how much um, potential earning power do you have and will it pay for itself? The I is interconnectedness. That's the I in all of my programs. And that's that concept of working smarter, not harder. And the T is my triangle approach. And so if you think about a, a stool, a three-legged uh, stool, a triangle, so you have SM, student money. So what is the student going to put in towards their degree? You have mm -hmm. FM, your friends, your family, your folks, the people you're familiar with. And then you have OPM, and that's our favorite because that is... Other people's, Other people's money. Exactly. Exactly. Now, I did this same presentation to a group in Australia, and they sincerely thought that I was saying opium and that selling opium would be an excellent way to earn money. To <laughs> And I said, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, it <laughs> might be effective. Well, right? I would never advocate for that. That would be I was uh, say, very much a jail mind. sentence would be a deterrent. The yes, fact that it's well, illegal is a problem, right? All, all the things, all the things, <laughs> all the things, right? Yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. So yes. So that's my uh, grit blueprint. Okay. So if we were going to start, and by mm -hmm. the way, if anybody's, uh, if you're w watching us through our Facebook group. I do actually have it open on my other monitor. So if you see me glancing over there, I am monitoring for questions. So if you are tuning right. in yeah. and you would like to ask Dr. Oz questions as yes. we go, feel free to comment there. Yes, okay. I'd love to. Yes, I'd love to answer some questions live. That'd be great. So grants and scholarships. Yes. There are certain aspects that are included like when a, a, a school identifies merit-based aid and when they send mm -hmm. out a, a package, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you said there's how many billion with a B? 30. 30, 30. billion. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Yes. Do you know how much of that actually is tapped into by students? Like I have searched for that. I do not know. 
I do not know. I also know anecdotally that um, that obviously all 30 billion are not taken up because it's really difficult sometimes to give away this money. It's mm -hmm. if it's a smaller scholarship, perhaps you know people aren't finding it. Um, I know when I worked in higher ed, I had a scholarship assigned to my office, and quite honestly, what would happen would be I would send out a, a mass email. Mm -hmm. uh, this was before texting was a thing, and um, and then as students came to my office, then I would mention it, or I'd have you know something on my door. Well, of course, the students that came to my office had more opportunities to even hear about it <clears throat> than the ones that didn't come, you know, and sure. then, you know, there's, you know, all of that. So, um, so I don't have a, a good idea on that. Okay. Um, so. so if a, a kiddo, let's say we've got a family tuning in and they're in seventh and eighth grade and we've got very forward thinking parents. Yay. Right. Oh, that and again, pom -pom. I need to, <laughs> I love the pom poms. Forward thinking so, parents. Yes. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit more exclusively in our Parent Tween Village segment. If you had like a one sentence recommendation of either when to get started or where to get started, what would you share with those folks who are okay. you know early on? Super easy. I would say when to get started today. Seventh grade parents today. Let's go ahead and start okay. racking up those scholarships. Where? Uh, I, because I believe that we're all interconnected and I believe in, as I said, working smarter, not harder. Dr. Ross does not know all the ins and outs of every scholarship and every grant. However, mm -hmm. Monica Matthews does. And she has a Facebook group called How to Win Scholarships. Uh, I think it's H-O-W H -O -W and then the number two scholarships. She also has her own website and she okay. has two guides, a guide for students and a guide for parents. And so um, she puts it all together. Her tagline is that she has three sons and all three of them went to college completely debt free on scholarships. And so okay. and then you should say, I, th I think there's like 20,000 parents in her Facebook group. And wow. so it, it, she is a great resource. I interviewed her for my Patreon community. Um, and so that's where I recommend folks to start. Awesome. Okay, cool. So I know you wanted to chat with us about one particular student by yes. the name of Henry. Yes. What you got? Yes. Let me tell you all about Henry. So uh, by the time, um, well, actually I had known Henry for a while. Henry's grandmother and I are good friends. And she was lamenting that he was just drowning in student loan debt and had uh, basically dropped out of school without acquiring a bachelor's degree. And so she asked me if I would meet with him and I said, yes. And it turned out for those of you, um, maybe in a different state or in a different system, um, in Georgia, it primarily you need about 120 credit hours in order mm -hmm. to earn a bachelor's degree. Right. He had attended a private institution here in Georgia and had accrued over 200 credit hours. He had changed his major several times mm -hmm. and because it was private, uh, then a lot of the credits didn't necessarily transfer to a public mm -hmm. institution. And so he, at this point, had accrued like $80,000 in debt and no bachelor's degree. And his ultimate job goal, his dream, was to teach foreign language at, at the college level, which generally meant, I mean, it always means that you have to have a master's degree, but in most cases, you're going to need a PhD. Mm -hmm. And so I met with him. Uh, we did what I call a degree audit. So I took his transcript. I went online and looked at different majors at that school. And then um, we we went to the registrar's office and said, look, this is how many credits he has. You know, is there a plan that we can put into place to let him graduate just as quickly as possible? Mm -hmm. And basically they come up with, yes, he can graduate with X degree and he needs five more classes. Well, I said, there's nothing I can do about this $80,000 that you've accrued in debt. However, from here forward, let's map out a debt-free degree plan. So sure. this sweet aunt stepped in and said, I will pay for those last two semesters. So for these five classes. And so, great, that was taken care of. Well, so then I helped him secure a job at a one of the universities as a janitor. And his grandmother let me know that her grandson was not to be a janitor. She didn't appreciate that. <laughs> she um, she was quite upset about this. And I said to her, I said, Henry's goal is to teach in higher ed. And she said, yes. And I said, are you aware that Henry is very bright? And she said, yes, that's why I don't want him to be a janitor. Mm -hmm. I said, Henry needs to be on the clock as a janitor for eight hours. 
it's not going to take Henry eight hours most days to clean the buildings that he's assigned. Plus, uh-huh. Henry is working in the evening. And so there's a lot of quiet time and a lot of downtime. Henry can either spend that playing games on his phone or he can spend that studying. Studying, One. absolutely. Exactly. Number two, are you aware that when you work full time at an institution in Georgia that you get benefits like health insurance and life insurance and dental insurance and paid vacation and you're building towards your retirement? And are you also aware that when you retire from an institution here in Georgia, that your retirement is based on your last two years of salary, not your first two years? And are you also aware that here in Georgia and in 13 other states, I'm throwing that out for your your audience, Uh that the benefits is tuition and fees at any other institution? Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, that, that job as a janitor looks pretty good. It does. Then he's able to get his master's and ultimately he'll get his PhD, hopefully. Um, Also, will already be in the system. So there are times where it says these are these jobs are for internal applicants only. Well, he's already an internal applicant. Mm -hmm. And when in, in Georgia, you don't have to get a degree that's related to your current job. So that's uh, Henry's story in a nutshell. And that is I'm I'm glad that you that you highlighted that because. If nothing else, like I'm sure that there are, there are going to be folks who are listening here who aren't all that dissimilar to, to Henry's grandma going, what are you talking about being a janitor or being a groundskeeper or being a like, on campus security or a mm-hmm. secretary or whatever else may be the case, right? A lot of students look at it. I'm going to go to college first and then pick up a part-time gig while I'm there. Yes, but what an example you're offering that yes. could be a good fit for many families of turning that paradigm upside down Yes, and be like, okay, like you're saying long-term, what's my goal and what is the most effective way to get there? Yes. Maybe it is taking a, you know, taking some time off, getting in at your local community college as a secretary, 32 hours a week or whatever they consider a full time and getting mm-hmm. free, free classes or free tuition. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I would have ever considered that as a high school student. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And I will oftentimes hear people say, I can't work full time and go to school. And you're looking at someone and I'll Mm -hmm. I'll share that later, but you're looking at someone that I've I've worked my entire life. And Mm -hmm. so when I was an undergrad, I worked 44 hours a week. Mm -hmm. So when somebody says I can't work full time, um, well, 40 hours, I think is 22% of your week. We each have 168 hours a week. Mm-hmm. So I'm asking you to put aside 40, right? Which means you still have, you know, if it's 78%, I'm not really great at that math part, but the balance of it, whatever <laughs> it is, eight hours a week left after you oh, work yeah. those 40 hours. And yes, you need to commute. And yes, there's a lunch hour and yes, you need to sleep. I totally get that, but mm-hmm. there's a way that you can do it. If you if your goal is a debt-free degree, I can help you. What happens, Clarissa, is people say, I want a debt free degree, but I want it at this at this major or at this school. Sure. I can it's a little dicier. I can point you in the right direction. But Mm -hmm. the minute you put this degree or this school, then that's your end goal. And it's not a debt free degree. It's I want that thing. And if Mm -hmm. I can do it debt free, that's what I'll do. And, And that's a little different. That is, you know, and it's interesting. I'm glad you made that clarification because this isn't to say necessarily that every degree at every school is attainable without some kind of debt involved, right? Well, but, technically, every every degree at every school is attainable without debt if you okay. have parents that are going to write the check. Okay, fair. Okay, so, fair. so yes, it is. Okay. Good clarification, <laughs> right? Um, and, and short of that, then, you know, then there's, there's some wiggle room there. That's awesome. And like I said, I never would have considered doing that. I went the backwards approach and rolled as an undergrad and at least had the the presence of mind to recognize I didn't know what I wanted to do when I grow up after my undergrad and did not continue for the Uh master's or PhD yet. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Um, okay. So obviously a whole lot of information just in this conversation, I think that people are getting the idea that you're an outside of the box thinker. Yes. I know you well enough, just the few times that we've chatted, that I know that you challenge preconceived op- uh, opinions mm-hmm. and preconceived um, biases, as it were. Mm-hmm. 
What do you think, aside from like not considering going the employment route, kind of like the back door in, right? The inside scoop or inside track in, what do you think is the biggest uh, misconception that parents and or today's college bound kids are navigating? I would say in terms of a debt-free degree, I would say parents don't understand the system. Okay. And so they, many times parents have, have gone to college. So mm -hmm. they know their own college experience, which yeah. may be vastly different from the way it is today. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they are reliant upon, they're reliant upon people to talk about college most of whom are talking about college as 1% of the thing that they do. So for example, you've got an excellent guidance counselor, mm -hmm. but that guidance counselor doesn't know every college in all 50 States. Sure. Absolutely. And I don't know how many guidance counselors know that um, say, for example, um, this is a, a, a school here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, the school offers associate's degrees and it offers bachelor's degrees. If you go in as an associate's level student, mm -hmm. your tuition is less than if you go in as a bachelor's level student. Both degrees require English 1101. But if you're paying full price for that, mm -hmm. then it's cheaper as an associate's level student than a bachelor's level student. And that's just one example. Right. And every school has its own little nooks and crannies in ways mm -hmm. that you can figure it out. Every school, let's say, for example, that um, that you have a reach school and mm -hmm. um, that's really, really, really where your child's heart's desire is. That's really where they want to be. Mm -hmm. Many of those schools have a much lower um, admission criteria mm -hmm. for summer semester because it's harder to fill summer. Uh -huh. So that's what you're interested in. But mom, everybody that I know is graduating high school in May and not going to college in August. Yes, that is what everybody is doing. Mm -hmm. However, there's some things that you can do that if you know what you want your path to be, mm -hmm. you can be strategic. And those are, I mean, I could, I could talk about this for the next three hours. I mean, and that's, it's, well, and it's, it's so clear that there's a strategy. And so what it's, I think my interpretation of what you're saying is that there are professionals, professionals who work in this world for a reason. Mm-hmm. And our experience from however many decades ago, you know, as we're supporting our up and coming teens now, yeah. our experience is very different than what the experience is right now for an array of contributing factors. Yes. So, yes. Yes. and you know, you mentioned um, with your, your friend's grandson, Henry, how he had accrued so much um, in debt, partly mm -hmm. because he had changed his degree. Yes. And I've heard you talking today about like, what's your end goal? Henry knew he wanted to teach in academia and this was a means to an end for him. He knew this wasn't where he was going to retire. And so he was very strategic in that process. And so I would throw out, you know, there's other folks in our community that I, that I know that you've met, you know, who specialize in the college admissions side. Yes, exactly. You know, we've got folks on the SAT and ACT side. Um, we've got folks on the career exploration side yes. and th those are all facets of the same trajectory in terms of having, helping kids navigate the process, um, all the way through. So I'm, I'm glad to hear you say in my words, like there's a reason that you guys do what you do. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. And I will also say again, I don't have statistics on this, but it's, and I didn't come up with this term, uh, but it's something I call the human algorithm. Mm -hmm. And in our human algorithm, if we're around everybody that has student loan debt, so if we're in public school, then many of our public school teachers and, and guidance counselors have student loan debt. Mm -hmm. It could even be that as a student, our parents already are, are still have student loan debt, Absolutely. which means that if a parent still has student loan debt, the likelihood that they've put aside any or, or a significant amount for their own child's education is relatively low. And yep. then if you're in this algorithm where everybody has student loan debt mm -hmm. and when you say, Hey, how can I do this debt free? Oh, let me tell you about the lowest interest rate, the, the cheapest way you can borrow money. That's mm -hmm. not what I asked you. 
That's not what I asked you. I, we have a, a local radio show and um, I listen to it every week and they were talking about the student loan crisis mm -hmm. and they said, you can call in and ask questions and we'll answer them online. And so I called in and said, no one is talking about ways to graduate debt free. And so they posed my question to the panel. Of course, they couldn't say, you know, this is Dr. Roz of debt free degree and she's promoting herself, you know, but right. I was asking like, how can you get, how can you uh -huh. get their debt free? And three people answered and all of them talked about ways you can either lower the interest rate on the debt or ways that you can pay off the debt quicker. Not but that's not debt free. Them, but not a one of them answered my question. <laughs> and it's because so few people think that it can happen. Uh -huh. I'm constantly pushing up uh -huh. against a mindset shift. Uh -huh. And what happens, Clarissa, too, is if you've got 99 people that say you have to take student loan debt in order to be a successful adult, and then you've got this one chick over here that's saying, well, I did it. Well, she's an anomaly. It won't work for me. Mm -hmm. Guess what? If you think I'm an anomaly and you think it won't work for you, then you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I mean, either you think you can or you think you can't. So there you go. There All right. Mean. So I have two final questions for you before we pop over to our private conversation for Parent Tween Village. Number one, I know that in reasonably recent history, you have been super thrilled to take on a role at the King Center. Oh, yes. Can you just like summarize that? Because I know that is super close to your heart. And I want to yes. give you our give our listeners a chance to just know <sighs> that side of you, which is just another aspect, again, another facet of this but yeah, so what are you doing there? And how does this tie in? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am delighted that you asked me about that. Thank you so much. Uh, yes. In uh, 2018, I became a certified trainer of nonviolence through the Martin Luther King Center. Our CEO is Dr. Bernice King. She is the youngest daughter of Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott King. And uh, she reached out and said, I'm assembling a training team. Um, are you interested uh, actually, I misspoke. We, we started our training in 2018. I was not certified until uh, 2019. And okay. so I was delighted to have been asked. I didn't know if she asked 100 people or 1,000 people. And I get there and there are 10 certified trainers. That's it. There's 10 plus uh, we have three senior trainers plus Dr. King. So there's 14 certified trainers in the world in King and Nonviolence. And I'm delighted to be on that team. Then about a year and a half ago, they asked me if I would come on board as special projects manager. So mm -hmm. I work with organizations who want the, the Nonviolence 365 training. And our definition of nonviolence is that it is a love centered way of thinking, speaking, engaging and acting that leads to personal and then cultural and then societal transformation. Once I became a project manager at the King Center, then I knew that my the bulk of my coaching business for, for college uh, needed to take a little bit of a back seat. The only program out of the seven that I had originally, the only one that I've continued is Debt Free Degree mm -hmm. because it is love centered. Do you mm -hmm. love yourself enough to put in the work ahead of time in order to graduate debt free? Because mm -hmm. you're going to work one way or the other mm -hmm. unless you've got a trust fund to which, you know, probably you're not even watching this video, but right. you're going to work one way mm -hmm. or the other on the front right. end or on the back end. And so why not put that work? Why not love yourself enough? So because of that, that's the thing, the uh, thread of nonviolence. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so that's a, a little bit about my work at the King Center and also debt free degree and how it ties together. And I love it because that's going to take us to the final point I want you to yeah. chat about. And that is your Patreon program, because that's how Debt Free Degree lives on. Correct? Yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly. So Currently, it is a, a Debt Free Degree with Dr. Roz. On my, you just go to patreon.com forward slash Debt Free Degree. It is $10 a month. You have all these videos in there, links that I put in there. And then you have access to me. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is um, for every single family that joins, and I do mean family, I look at this as a little bit, excuse me, like a uh, one of those monthly subscriptions that kind of mm -hmm. two, three people can, you know, log in at the same time or whatever. Sure. So, uh, so family organize. I have one family uh, that has 12 kids 
and their youngest is tiny, tiny. And I'm like, yes, $12, $10 a month. Yes. I want to help all of you. I love it. And so, um, so yeah, so you have access to me in there and access to all the videos. I am also going to be expanding it a little bit. So I have mm -hmm. something called love revolution with Dr. Roz oh, and I talk yeah. about leading with love. And so mm -hmm. you may see the headline of my Patreon change, but then the tags will be in there for debt free. Okay. Ready. So ten dollars a month, and you have access to me and the videos and the teaching, and I'm happy to help you whenever we. Man, I, I wish Marissa I have have teachers who are a part of the Patreon because they share the videos with their students. Oh, stuff. what a great idea! Yeah. yeah, awesome. Yeah, awesome, man. I wish I'd had you twenty some odd years ago. <laughs> yes. yes, yes. All right. We round out all of our conversations with our roundtable guests and any of our podcast guests by asking them which of our foundations of connection resonates the most with them today. Now, the foundations of connection underpin everything that we do here at Parent Tween Connection. And they're, they're the foundations that apply to any relationship, I believe. They came out of a conversation that I had with myself several years ago about why my high school kids, my high school students, would often feel more comfortable talking to me about things that they weren't quite ready to talk to mom and dad or another mm -hmm. advisor about. And so these are kind of what came out. The first letter of each, each phrase spells out connection. If you'd like that downloadable copy of this, we do have it right on our website. And so it's uh, create a safe place, mm. observe, non-judgment, nod and smile, explore, Challenge your truths or curiosity, take your time, innovate, own your own story, and nurture. So Dr. Raz, I'm curious, which one is popping up most for you today? Okay, so then you said most, because if you said which one pops up, I would say see through in. I can I can link debt-free degree to every one of those. Absolutely. I would say the one that um, most loudly resonates is mm -hmm. innovate. Because that truly is what a debt-free degree is. It mm -hmm. truly is an innovation. It truly is saying everybody else is doing it this way. And I'm going to go my own path mm -hmm. and I'm going to forge a way so that I don't graduate with the average $75,000 in student loan debt. That is <laughs> more, that is more than my first mortgage. Of course I'm old and my first mortgage was in the last millennium. However, that is more <laughs> than my first mortgage. Yes. But that's, it's a lot of money, no matter how you cut money. it. That's a yeah. lot of money. So yeah. All right. So, um, Dr. Roz, thank you so much for being with us. And Thanks I so appreciate much. so much the time and the knowledge that you've shared with us already. And for folks who are members of Parent Tween Village, we're going to pop over there and have another conversation about scholarship resources. And Dr. Roz is going to share a bit more about her own personal story. If you're watching this sometime down the road and you're, and you're like, Parent Tween Village, what's that? Well, come on over to ParentTweenConnection.com. These uh, conversations are going to live there forever. Um, you'll be able to join Parent Tween Village at any point and you'll still be able to come back. So even if it's like six months or six years from now, I have a feeling debt-free degree with Dr. Roz isn't going anywhere. That's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Dr. Roz. We'll see you in Parent Tween Village. Thank you, Clarissa, for having me. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate y'all. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.